Hello, my name is Mark Block, and I'm Chief of the Division of Thoracic Surgery in the Memorial Cancer Institute here in Hollywood, Florida. We see a lot of patients with lung cancer, and so I thought it would be helpful if we put together some videos that cover topics that we cover frequently, so that patients have a resource, their family members have a resource, and they can review some of the things we talked about during their visits. It's often overwhelming the amount of information. Much of it goes in one ear and out the other. So hopefully this will serve as a resource to help refresh that memory. I've talked a little bit about lung cancer staging and treatment in another video, and in this one I'd like to talk about surgery for lung cancer. Surgery is the very best treatment for a stage one or an early lung cancer, and it's the cornerstone of treatment in stage two. The basics are the cancer is considered localized to the lung, and therefore removing the cancer gives the patient a very good chance of being cured. For stage one, the cure rates can be as high as 70 or 80 percent, particularly if the cancer is discovered during a screening test. Now that may not sound great, but for lung cancer that's a remarkable achievement. So we generally recommend surgery for patients who are healthy enough to tolerate it. What does that mean? Well, this is a model of the right lung. It's a life-size model, and you can see it has three lobes, an upper lobe, a middle lobe, and a lower lobe. The right lung is about 55% of all total lung function. The left lung is about 45%. So if we're going to remove a part of the lung, we're going to remove some lung function. So let's imagine, for example, that there's a tumor in the upper lobe, and we're going to remove the upper lobe of the right lung. That's what we'll call a lobectomy. That will remove about 15% of total lung function. If a person has normal lung function, that's not a big deal. Probably would not notice much of a difference, especially with routine activities. Now, if you're an extreme athlete and running marathons and climbing mountains, you would notice a little bit of a difference. You notice you get a little bit more tired and out of breath with activity and have to stop and rest slightly more frequently. But for the most part, that much of an operation would be very well tolerated. Now, if the tumor is in the lower lobe, you can see that removing the lower lobe takes out more lung function. That's about half of the right lung, so that's about 25% of total lung function. People with normal lung function would notice a difference, but it wouldn't be a big difference. When they exercise or do activity, they'd have to stop and catch their breath more frequently, but it would not interfere with their normal life. They would not be on oxygen or need a wheelchair or anything like that. We measure lung function with a test called the pulmonary function test. That's a test where you breathe into a machine, and the machine measures how much air your lungs hold, how easy it is for you to breathe in and out, and how well the lungs handle oxygen and carbon dioxide. We can use that test to predict what the breathing will be like after an operation when we know how much lung is going to be removed. If we decide that the patient does not have adequate lung function to tolerate an operation, then we often re recommend an alternative treatment such as radiation therapy. How do we do these operations? Well, the fundamental operation is to remove the entire lobe. And the key is to do a good job so we get down to the root of the lung, remove all the lymph nodes with the lung, and get the patient through the operation safely. It used to be we would do these operations through an incision called a thoracotomy. That's an incision that goes around the shoulder blade on the side, and we spread the ribs apart. It gives us the best exposure, but it does take a little bit more time in recovery. So now we do these operations, for the most part, using a minimally invasive technique. The most common one is called VATS, that's V-A-T-S, and it stands for Video Assisted Thoracic Surgery. In that operation, we make three little incisions, put a camera in one incision, our instruments in the other two, and we're able to remove the lobe of the lung completely, along with all the lymph nodes. For the most part, most patients can have their operation done with this technique. Tumors that are larger or that may be stuck to surrounding structures like the rib cage often require a bigger incision, but for most stage one and stage two lung cancers, the operation can be done with that minimally invasive technique. Another minimally invasive technique is using the surgical robot. That's a machine that sits at the bedside and the surgeon sits at the console. The surgeon can operate levers on the console and move the instruments that are placed inside the body using the robotic system. That's another technique for minimally invasive surgery, and many surgeons prefer that technique because of the improved dexterity and the three-dimensional vision. It's comparable to the VATS approach in terms of the recovery and the hospital stay. Both of them, we expect the patient to stay in the hospital between two and five days after surgery, and then a couple of weeks at home recovering. Some people are well enough to go back to work within a week or two. I generally don't recommend it, 
but it can be done. For most patients, the operation is very safe. The risk of a serious life-threatening complication is less than 2%. That includes things like major bleeding, massive heart attack, stroke, some horrible complication. 95% of the patients make it through the operation in very good shape and go home in a few days. The most common complication is what's called atrial fibrillation. That's a palpitation of the heart. The heartbeat goes very quickly. Some people don't even know it's happening, but we can detect it because we monitor the heartbeat after surgery. Generally, this is treated with some medication to slow down the heart rate. Heart rate. Patients go home on that medication, and the heart goes back to normal within a few weeks, and they can stop the medication. The other more common complication is the drainage tube. At the end of surgery, we leave a small tube in between the ribs that goes to a box on the floor that drains any fluid or blood or air that might be collecting after surgery and ensures that that lung is healing in a good fashion. Usually that tube comes out in a day or two, but sometimes it has to stay in for longer. And there are even some rare cases in which we let patients go home with that drain in place, but that's unusual. Most people have the tube removed in two to three days. The other big complication that we worry about, but it's fortunately uncommon, is pneumonia. After lung surgery, it's important that people get up, move around, take deep breaths, cough, and clear their lungs. Especially with smokers, that can be very hard to do. They generate a lot of mucus, and it's hard to clear their lungs, especially if they have an incision and have some pain. That can lead to development of a pneumonia. And it's important to make sure that if you have the surgery, you're up walking around, coughing, and clearing the lungs. And if you can do all of that, then the risk of pneumonia is very low. For early stage lung cancer, we know the best operation is a lobectomy, where we remove the entire lobe. But there are some circumstances in which we do a lesser operation, or a sublobar resection. If the tumor is very small, for example, maybe we don't need to remove the entire lobe. And we know from experience that removing the entire lobe is the very best treatment for cancer, and that if we just remove a little bit of, tumor, a little bit of lung around the tumor, the risk of the cancer coming back is higher. That's called a wedge resection, if we just go in and remove a little bit of lung around the tumor. So we generally try not to do wedge resections as therapy for cancer. Sometimes we have a patient with a small tumor, we're worried it's a cancer, but we don't know in advance, we can do a wedge resection of the tumor, check it right away in the operating room under frozen section, have the pathologist look at it, and if it is a cancer, go ahead and remove the rest of the lobe. Sometimes we have a small tumor that's in like the top portion of this lobe and we don't want to remove the entire lobe. We can do what's called a segmentectomy. And there's very good evidence that for small tumors, less than two centimeters, which is about an inch, doing a good segmentectomy is probably equivalent to doing a lobectomy. And what do I mean by that? Well, just like the lung is divided into lobes, there are three lobes on the right, each lobe is also divided into segments. So for example, the upper lobe has three segments, the middle lobe has two segments, and the lower lobe has five. You can't see them from the outside, but if you look at the inside of the lung, you can see the branches of the windpipe and the branches of the artery and vein going into each one of those segments. So for example, if there's a small tumor in the top portion of the lower lobe, we can do a segmentectomy, which essentially removes that upper segment of the lobe. That's called a sublobar resection. And there's good evidence that that's as good as a lobectomy for some patients. It helps to preserve a lot of lung function while at the same time doing a good cancer operation. The important thing to remember is that a segmentectomy is based on the anatomy of the lung. It's an anatomic resection. It's not a wedge resection where we just go in and cut out what we see. If the tumor is slightly larger or we don't feel that it's appropriate to do a sublobar resection or it's not really in a good place to do that, then a lobectomy is the best operation. This is a model of the main windpipe as it branches into the lung. So here's the trachea, it branches into the left lung and the right lung, and you can see the branches to the different lobes. Three lobes on the right, upper lobe, middle lobe, and lower lobe. Two branches on the left, upper lobe and lower lobe. And I'm showing this to you because I want to illustrate that if the tumor is centrally located, not out in the periphery of the lung, but in the central part of the lung, Sometimes it encroaches on the main windpipe, and in order to safely remove it with clear, normal tissue margins, we may have to remove the entire lung, or more than just the lobe, or do something called a sleeve resection. That's an area where we cut out part of the windpipe and put it back together. 
Those are more complex operations, but those are the circumstances in which we have to do more than just a straightforward lobectomy. For most lung cancer operations, we can use the minimally invasive techniques, and it takes anywhere between an hour and a half to three or four hours. Some more complex operations where we have to remove adjacent structures, so for example, the rib cage, if the tumor involves the rib cage, can take longer than that. But most of the time, we're in the two-hour range. Now, patients and their families can expect the whole process to take longer because patients need to get to the operating room, go to sleep safely, be positioned for the operation, have the surgery, wake up from the surgery, and then get to the recovery room. So patients' families are often anxious because they were told the operation would only take two hours and it's now going on three hours. So please remember that the operation doesn't start when the patient leaves the holding area. I'm frequently asked by patients whether their cancer is fast growing or slow growing, and how long it's been there. That's a question that's difficult to answer unless we have a series of x-rays over time. Usually that's not the case. But what I do tell them is that cancers tend to grow relatively slowly. Most lung cancers have probably been present for several months, maybe even a year or two, before they get to be large enough to be seen on an x-ray. Now, cancer growth is exponential. In other words, it doubles after every 90 days or 120 days, whatever the time period is. So once a cancer gets to be large enough to be seen on an x-ray, it then looks like it's growing very rapidly, even though the growth rate is the same as it was when it first started as one microscopic cell. So how important is it that we get to surgery quickly? or get the patient under treatment quickly. In general, I recommend that we not wait more than a few weeks. Now, the tumor's probably been there for several months or maybe even a year, so the difference of a few weeks is not going to make any difference. But sometimes the tumors are close to the surface of the lung or close to the central part of the chest, and if they grow much bigger, it may turn a situation from an easy operation into a difficult operation or a potentially curable cancer into a cancer that we may not be able to cure. Nobody knows the answer for sure, but one guideline is that when we have a patient with an abnormality on a CAT scan, say a small tumor, we don't know what it is, we often recommend a follow-up in three months. A three-month window, I think, is the longest we would want to wait before recommending treatment for a known cancer. So those are the basics of lung cancer surgery. Obviously, talk to your surgeon if you need any more information. Thank you.